Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, over here in the George Built Garage. This is actually the exact bay I put my first supercharger on my car. And we are here today to talk about the Merc Racing TVS 1320 setup. Right over here, we have this beautiful 50,000 mile FG2 that we're going to be installing this kit on later this month. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about the components that come with the kit. So obviously when you purchase the TVS 1320 kit, it is going to come with the manifold, the appropriate base plate, and the supercharger itself. This one is made by Harrop. Uh, you may see some Magnuson cases out there as well. Uh, those were an earlier generation. The supercharger comes with the Stage 1 pulley, which is a 3.5 inch diameter pulley, and it does come with the Merc Racing 74 millimeter inlet. The inlet comes with the option of a 74 millimeter drive-by cable adapter, the K20 or K24 drive-by wire adapter, or the J37 adapter. All of those components come with the kit. It also comes with this, this beautiful block off plate here if you are not purchasing the air to water cooler, which we'll go over here in a little bit. So those are the primary components that come with the kit when you purchase it. Next, we're going to go over some additional components that you will need in order to put this kit into your 8th gen Civic. The 8th gen Civic does not run a hydraulic power steering pump. Therefore, you will need to change that upper idler pulley to the Merc Racing adjustable tensioner, which you can see here. It does have the mechanical adjustability up and down of this top pulley. However, you will still maintain the use of your spring-loaded uh, tensioner here that will allow the belt to stretch and contract during load application and removal. Moving on from there, we will go on to other additional components. K24 coolant bypass is what is typically referred to. On the K20Z3 or the K24A2 head, you will need to use this component to utilize the coolant ports right here on the head. The K20Z3 manifold incorporates this into the manifold. However, the Merc Racing Supercharger manifold is based on the K20A2 variant, so it can fit onto all of the different K-series you see out there. This piece mounts right here, and it needs to be mounted directly to the head and not on the manifold gasket. The next component that you will need would be a four bar map sensor. Here we have a speed factory variant. They also have Honda and a couple other variants where the internals are nearly the same or identical, uh, just in a little bit different packaging. This mounts to the Merc Racing manifold right in here. You can see it is already pre-drilled with a securing bolt here. You will want to put this on before you put the supercharger on because it does block access to it a little bit. The next additional component will be an intake air temp sensor. I typically runs the, run the ones from T1 Racing. It is a 1 8 NPT intake air temp sensor and it will be wired into two of the wires on your factory MAF sensor. As a factory MAF sensor does incorporate an air temp sensor into it. However, you want this located after the supercharger and after any cooler you are running. This will be mounted right here on the manifold. And this port here it is located so that it will be after any water cooler used uh, and after the supercharger so that you're getting the most accurate air temps. The next major supporting component you will need is fuel injectors. I personally run injector dynamics on just about every car that I build. I uh, really enjoy the reliability and the accuracy of these. You see here they are already installed onto the manifold. These are ID 1000s. They can be used with any OEM or aftermarket rail on the Merc Racing Supercharger manifold. This is an RSX base fuel rail. You can use it with the K20Z3 fuel rail, the Merc Racing fuel rail, or any of the other aftermarket options. Then there are some uh, additional components not necessarily required. However, I do enjoy them thoroughly. This is the Merc Racing thermal gasket. It is also O-ringed on both sides. The O-rings are serviceable. If you were to damage one or lose one, you can reach out to Merc Racing and get additional ones. We found on some of the other brands thermal intake manifold gaskets that with the play in the holes, you could actually have the gasket obstructing some of your intake. So Jose decided to go ahead and make his own. These fit much tighter and we haven't had any issue with it blocking the actual intake ports on the head. Some other cool little shine up bits here. Uh, we also have the, the Merc Racing Coil Pack cover. This is a little dirty, I apologize about that. This is just our mock-up motor in the garage. Moving down to underneath the supercharger. Some things we haven't covered yet is the actual manifold brace that you see here. It comes with a adapter piece here with the support brace and the adapter to mount down here. This is a K20A3 bottom end. 
So the mounting portion down here is a little bit different than what you will see on a Z3. However, Merc Racing does have them for the Z3 uh, coming, coming here shortly. The next thing we're going to talk about is the thermostat and thermostat housing. So this is your standard K20 Z3 thermostat housing. If we actually try and get this mounted up in here, which we really can't, uh, it will contact the supercharger manifold. The K20 Z3 and the 8th Gen Civic Si is really the only one you're going to have this issue with. In order to remedy that, what you're going to do is use, the easiest way to go about it is the EP3 or RSX thermostat and thermostat housing, which has more of a downward angle at it, as you can see here, which will clear the brace, it will clear the manifold, um, and later on in the video we will show you how to use the, the stock lower radiator hose uh, with this thermostat housing uh, with really no issues. K-Tuned also makes a swivel thermostat housing here. You have to be kind of careful how you're using it so that you can maintain, one, the use of your thermostat, and two, the use of the recirculating hose that goes to the K24 coolant bypass that we went over earlier. When installing this into the 8th gen, you will need to measure for a belt. The kit does not come with a belt, um, as we have seen a, a variance um, in belt length needed depending on crank pulley size, supercharger pulley size, um, and then guys who have K24 swaps, etc., etc. Typically, we see about an 82 and a half to an 83 and a half inch belt being used. Uh, however, we do recommend that you measure it once you have it all mocked up onto the car. This kit here has the stage one pulley on it, like we said before, which is a 3.5 inch pulley. Merc Racing also does offer a 3.2, a 3.0, and a 2.8 pulley. We actually have a 2.8 pulley around here somewhere. Not sure if I'll be able to find it. So here we have the, the 2.8 inch pulley. We're initially going to run this kit with the stage one pulley and no after cooler to try and get some baseline power and pressure and temps data. Um, the 1320 can be run on cooled on the stage one pulley. That's what we're gonna prove here on this car. And then after that, uh, if you were to spin up the supercharger or if you were to run a TBS 1900, we would recommend uh, immediately going to the air to water cooler. The air to water cooler, mount right here inside of the manifold you just remove these 12 perimeter bolts here remove this plate and the after cooler core slides directly in once that is installed you will need both a remote fill or a reservoir which needs to be the highest point in the cooling system which will run down to a pump of some sort this is a Bosch brushless that is included in these after cooler kits from Merc Racing, which will then loop forward to a heat exchanger in the front of the car. It will run in, out, and then back to the after cooler core. And that will need to be triggered by a key on 12 volt source uh, that will trip a relay to run this to ensure that you are not damaging any of the vehicle's factory wiring. From there, the last thing on the big list is tuning. So here we have the Honda Flash Pro and we have the K tuner. Both of them will get the job done. Uh, it's really between you, your tuner, and your budget as far as which one of these you decide to run. I personally run Honda Flash Pro. We're going to give this K tuner a shot here on this, this coupe that we're going to be installing this on. For those of you who like to dress things up, this is not a Merc Racing provided item. However, we have found that with the CompTech spacers, the CompTech carbon fiber fuel rail cover does fit on these kits uh, for those of you who are really into the dress up stuff and that also complements nicely with the Merc Racing Coil Pack cover. Like I said originally I'm over here at the George Bill Garage. Um, this is the place where I initially started uh, putting a super, my first supercharger on the car and we, we do have some experience with some supercharged Hondas. Uh, from here we're going to go ahead and go down the line and just see what we have. So here we have obviously this I believe it was 49,000 mile FG2, the, the wife's daily driver, uh, which here shortly we're going to see how far we can push a TVS 1320 on. Moving down the line, we've got a 2000 SI, the B18C5, and the Jackson Racing Supercharger. It's a little dark, not sure if you'll be able to see in there. Yet again, another daily driver. We've got the 2008 Yugen SI, TVS 1320. This car is completely stock other than the supercharger kit. It's on a stock fuel pump, it is on stock header cat exhaust, and it's even utilizing the stock air intake box. Uh, this car puts out pretty much no blower noise. Um, 
and it makes for a hell of a sleeper. Moving on from there, we've got my personal car, which I did just have completely disassembled two days ago, so it's still missing some, some pieces, some trim, and some intakes. But this is a TVS 1900 full fuel system, head studs, head gasket, fully built trans, header and exhaust, and the, the dual throttle body setup that we've been testing over at Merc Racing. Um, all of these cars are daily driven. All of them are nice and dirty in the engine bay. If you haven't seen that so far. Uh, Merc Racing kits really allow you to start from the mild and go all the way to the, the crazy wild and maybe even a little bit stupid that I've got here for a daily driver. But with the Merc Racing kits, you're gonna get the reliability, you're gonna get the repeatability, and you're gonna get the longevity that you may not get from some other cars. Um, so let's go back inside. We also have this beautiful uh, B-Series turbo car that's turned into a beautiful shelf around here. It's taken apart for paint about five years ago. We'll get to that. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, additionally, talking on these kits and the supporting components, I went over the majority of the items that are on the engine itself on the front side to ensure that this engine can breathe. However, one of the other things that you need to be taking into uh, realistic thought processes is how is this going to exhale. Um, so that's when you come back here. If you are not planning on running a race header, uh, I would highly recommend it. It is going to become very restrictive as you approach that 300 horsepower or above area if you are running a stock cat. Um, please do remember the Merc Racing Supercharger kits are for off-road use only. For anybody out there watching. Uh, however, a race header and high flow exhaust will be the way to get the absolute most bang for your buck out of these kits, uh, possibly aside from the water cooler. Here in the next week, two weeks, we'll be tearing apart this beautiful thing here to go ahead and put this on there. And we should have some data for you as well as some additional videos as we go through and install this. There are some slight tweaks that are needed to be made. We went over the thermostat and thermostat housing. Um, we also need to clearance a little bit of the water pump housing on the backside here near intake uh, runner number one. Other than that, I think we've covered just about everything we have. If you have any questions, if uh, you want any advice or if I missed anything and you want to bring it up, go ahead and comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and also give my, my boy JLG type R a like on Instagram. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>